station. So there is a certain number of people living in that area. And sec and third is yung land area mismo ng possible LGU. So it has to be contiguous, hindi siya pwedeng uh, hiwa-hiwalay. So parang for example, I cannot merge Baguio and um Cagayan de Oro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kasi it's contiguous and adjacent uh, with one another. Mm-hmm. So the standards or yung cap no kung magkano yung income, magkano yung popu- uh, how many in the population is determined from by the LGU or, or sorry the uh, uh it's the standards are you know being constantly updated so i think for income for example for component city 20 million dapat minimum mm-hmm. highly urbanized city ka dapat 50 million and then kapag nasa metro manila ka 100m i'm not sure no if that's already outdated though <laughs> Kasi population is the minimum for any, kung whether city, component city, highly urbanized, or uh, a city in the metro, 250,000 dapat ang ano, minimum population. Yun. Uh, I'm sure, o oh nga, dahil ano, I think that's the logical, ano, dahil kung sobrang dami na nga naman ng, ng tao dun sa isang lugar, uh, maybe administratively wise, uh, it would be better to... <laughs> to subdivide the mm. pero in divi- in dividing this ano in your example in dividing this local government units into two or three the the division must be that in the split of this LGU into how many fragments you want it dapat hindi nagbibilaw minimum mm-hmm. doon sa three standards that you have mentioned yung income population and land area Uh, by the way, mm-hmm. yeah, sorry. I, I, I just, uh, just something just popped into my mind with respect to the, let's say, split of, uh, of, let's say, a municipality, two municipalities is split into two. Kasi uh, meron din sila, di ba, an uh, IRA, yung internal revenue allotment. Yung ba hinahati rin with the uh, new, uh, new uh, entity? Hinahati nung dalawang entity yung yung era nila? Well, I, I, I would suppose so. But of course, as to how yung pag-split niya and when it will operationalize, that's something that's internal already. Mm-hmm. Kung ano ba gawin ng <coughs> DOF yan, no? yung kanilang internal revenue allotment. But I think it's interesting that you raise that because there are basically, I just like to as early as now, Uh, point out na for local government units there are two ways for the there are two manners or sources pala on how they can get the revenue mm-hmm. one is their self uh, their constitutional power to impose their own taxes mm-hmm. on in their own territory and obviously their just share in the revenue allotment internal revenue allotment right uh, I, it just popped into my mind because uh, again Uh, there was this latest Supreme Court ruling, yung Mandana's ruling, which practically increases the IRA of local government, uh, including collections of other uh, revenue collecting agencies. Na dati, purely from BIR lang. I, I, I assume this would be a bone of contention in dividing or allocating the IRA between the, the two uh, local government units. That it's going really going to be a bone of contention, but in terms of how you're going to, ano nga? Sure, that would all depend na kung kailan ba magsa-start yung split or kailan ba magsa-start yung division. But if the if nag nag-pass naman na yung division or approved, kasi remember pag naipasa na yan into na law, dadaan pa yan ng plebiscite. Na kung saan it has to be ratified by the constituents themselves. So if all of these requirements were met meaning it has been there's a law it has been it has underwent a plebiscite and ratified by the constituents then hindi naman na dapat magiging issue ang pag-split nung nung internal revenue allotment all right kasi obviously this being a new LGU they will have to be entitled to that allotment to, as well to the same privileges that uh, the existing uh, LGU. LGU right anyway Uh, thank you very much for that clarification. Nabanggit mo kasi yung mayroon silang uh, power to raise their own revenue. Mm-hmm. So that brings me to the actually nasagot mo na yung isa kong question pero dagdagan pa natin. 
uh, sabi natin this uh, local government code is um, uh, is cre- uh, was codified was enacted to uh, reflect your constitutional intention and provision to give them uh, autonomy and kasama na diyan nabanggit mo mayroon silang mga powers to raise revenues um, so maliban diyan ano pa yung mga powers na uh, dati wala sa local government before the enactment of the local government code of 1991 would you uh, provide hmm. some examples well po, i Uh, I cannot give you an example no, on what was not there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, what, what, what uh, is there na ngayon? An- ano na But, yung as, to the, ngayon? as to the local government code, mak- uh, makikita mo naman dyan eh, actually naka-scattered yung provision na yan mm-hmm. throughout, it, throughout the provisions. So they have obviously the power to legislate, kaya kami isang guniang pang nalawigan or isang guniang pang lungsod. You have also proprietary powers. Yun nga, as I've mentioned a while ago, the ability or sorry the power or capacity to operate yung mga public markets they also have to a certain degree yung control over the police because obviously that's within their ano naman, within their territory as well they also have the power of eminent domain hindi lang yung hindi lang national government ang pwede mag-exercise sa eminent domain as a beefer pag sinasabing eminent domain basically the state has an interest over your property they have the right to take it from you for just compensation. Mm-hmm. Parang simple yun yan. They also have yung mga express and implied powers. Yan yung papasok yun sa local government code. Ay, sorry, yung mga kanilang local government uh, local, local government charters. Kaya nga, di ba, may mga how much yung penalty mm-hmm. na inipos, how much yung rates kapag mga local business taxes sa pinag-uusapan. That is, the, those are examples of express powers. Aha. Uh-huh the local government. And lastly is they also have regulatory powers. Kaya nga, for example, in the National Building Code, meron sila na the LGU are the ones that are allowed to, that uh, are regulating such an activity by um, yung ano yun, yung pag-issue ng mga building permit, yung pag-issue ng location ng clearance, you, t- you get that from the local government you need. So that's regulatory. If you want to enter and and engage in the business, it's also regulatory on the part of the LGU. Regulatory power nila yan in securing yung business permit. The mayor's permit na tinatawa. Hmm. Ayun. So, at least malino. May isa pa akong tanong about that. Alimbawa, kasi narinig ko, attorney, merong mga arrangement, mga sister cities with other uh, with other countries, uh, cities in other countries. Uh, pwede rin ba silang ano, although this may sometimes be just uh, parang uh, an informal arrangement or a formal arrangement ng recognition ng uh, friendship between two cities pwede rin ba silang uh, makipag-trade ika nga uh, kalakalan sa, iba, sa cities sa ibang bansa meron ba sa kapangyarihan yung mga local government to do that strictly speaking wala no in terms of them being the trade partners But they have the uh, ability because they are also they also have corporate powers to transact. Mm-hmm. So, kaya nga, di ba, may mga nakikita ka yung mga dinodonate ng ibang bansa. For example, sa city of ganito, yung mga fire trucks. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, that's actually allowed. But economic trade in general is one that yung, is what yung pag-export, for example. Then that's a different issue. And I think that is that forms part ng powers of the national government. Mm-hmm. Ayun. So, uh, just to clarify, merong, yung mga donation po pwede, pero yung actual trade, of course, that's regulated by the national government. Merong mga restriction dyan. Dahil minsan meron tayong mga item na hindi po pwede. Meron mga it- may mga export or imports na prohibited. Ganun ba, attorney? Yes, yung mga standards yun, kaya nga damadaan niya ng customs. If, even if hindi yan donation, pwede silang mag-purchase if they want to. Ha? Pero when you want to broker trade deals, that's a different issue altogether. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so um, uh, these are, you explain to us the certain latitudes of the powers that can be exercised by local government, uh, certain ways for them to raise their revenues. Um, what about yung uh, 
Uh, can you tell us about the devolution of powers naman na binigay sa kanila? Yung, health, yung mga services, sa, ano yung health services? sa Salimbawa, ano pa ba yung mga devolved powers na binigay sa local government? Uh, devolved powers, ayan na, actually, yan na nga yun eh. As we have discussed already, these are the powers that's devolved. Basically, devol- devolution is a form of decentralization in this case. But, kung mapapansin mo, what is exactly or mostly, if not all, na na-devolve to the local government unit is yung mga executive functions. Mm. Yung pagbibigay mo ng health services, yung pagmimaintain ng hospitals, yung pagbibigay mo ng yung pagsesecure mo ng government services with ano. Kaya nga, most LGUs play host to mga national government agencies such as yung mga PSA, yung may mga one-stop shop din sila, nandiyan yung nagbabranch. Because, again, na naka, naka-devolve yung mga administrative and executive services to these LGUs as can be or as manifested in the powers that we have just uh, discussed. Ayun. So, malinaw na yon. At least, uh, uh, malinaw that uh, mayroong mga powers devolved so that uh, they can perform uh, and uh, answer to the needs of their constituent with respect to the Uh, grant of autonomy under the constitution uh, pwede nga nabanggit natin uh, uh, the wearer uh, of the shoe knows where it hurts sabi nga anyway attorney uh, in general uh, paano ba yung uh, siguro alam da rin ng marami ito pero in general paano ba yung structure natin ng mga local government units uh, yung hierarchy nito ano yung Uh, meron bang power of supervision halimbawa yung governor over the mayor ano yung power ng mga local uh, executives dun sa uh, lower subdivisions ng local government um, each local government unit has a certain degree of autonomy so there's no re- there's no power of control so to speak between the between and among your LGUs But there's a certain power of supervision because, again, there are certain laws na kung saan na, na, na dinelegate sa region or dinelegate sa city as opposed to the barangay. So, again, in terms of control, wala masyadong gan, pinag-uusapan na power of control when it comes to the relationship between and among local government units. So, the lowest or from from the core, not lowest, <laughs> from the basic unit uh, na LGU, you have your barangay. And then, aangat ka dyan to your city or municipality as the case may be. Then, you have your province or your regions. And then, obviously, your national government na. Aha. May nabanggit ka kasi kanina, uh, attorney, yung chartered city. Ano ba pagkakaiba nito mga to? Chartered city, component city, pag chartered city siya the uh, that they have their own ano they have their own well, as uh, as you say charter no and they have a separate uh, dis- and distinct personality as opposed to your component cities which is uh, integrated no with the specific province or region na kung na where they are ano where they are well located in So the benef- so the only difference really is in terms of what that there are certain powers depending on the, the charter that a high, that a chartered city can actually exercise as opposed to a component city. And obviously more often than not those chartered cities are more economically developed than your component cities. Ayon. Uh, thank you very much, Attorney, for enlightening me and our Katribo. Even uh, uh, in a more general sense, ika nga, what the local government is all about. Uh, for now, we will take a break. And uh, once we're back, we will have a trivia for you and our Katribo.
mapalutong bahay man o sumptuous meal for special occasions, sagot na kayo ng tropang kalanpag. Dahil atid sa inyo ng Daily Tribune ang fun and exciting cooking show na kalanpag, manood at matuto kung paano lutuin ang mga favorite niyong recipes. Sabayan pa ng fun and inspiring na kwentuhan sa kusina. I-upgrade na rin natin ang mga nakasanayang traditional dish ng pamilya. Plus, healthy tipid tips na ibabahagi ng tropang kalanpag. Matuto, mabusog at mga good vibes dito lang sa kalanpag tuwing lunes 10.30am sa Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribune Now on YouTube. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Oh, vaccination, isolation, gotta keep up with my nutrition, gotta maintain my body condition, then I can take my vaccination. What do I choose? What do I take? As long as it is not a fake. AstraZeneca, Moderna, BioNTech, even Sinovac, okay now. Vaccination for the nation, no more isolation. With vaccination. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Welcome back mga Katribo and you're still with us at Katribo Legal Diaries and also with Attorney Alfred. Nandito pa rin kami and we were just discussing about the Local Government Code of 1991. The last time we were talking about the structure of our local government units and we were uh, Uh, and we discuss the differences between the component cities and the chartered cities. Now for this next segment, attorney, we have a trivia to say, to share here. Uh, just let me know if you have anything to say or comment on this one. Okay? Tribunal Republic Act number 7160, otherwise, otherwise known as the Local Government Code of 1991, was enacted into law to transfer control and responsibility of delivering basic services to the hands of the local government units or LGUs. Its primary objective is to improve service delivery at the grassroots level, as well as resource allocation efficiency, and to broaden the decision-making space by encouraging stakeholder participation, especially at the local level. Hmm. <laughs> Attorney, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, it's actually clear. 
that that's what I've been mentioning at the very beginning of the program, no? Na that the local government code is basically a consolidation of the ma- of the powers granted to the local government unit. And the very reason why your local government units exist is to ensure that local autonomy is present and exercised because it is be- because it is local autonomy that you know that through local autonomy it is believed that the services the services are more efficient are efficiently given and effectively provided for the constituents and ensures as mentioned in the trivia that the local constituents as well have participation in the determination of these policies and uh, uh, of these policies Yeah, attorney, uh, thank you very much for that. Pero let me just mention then, maybe uh, it is very timely that we are now celebrating the 36th anniversary of the EDSA People Power Revolution, which brought us a change in the government and the new constitution, which expressly granted the local autonomy to local government units. And as a byproduct and as a consequence of that, na inak din itong Local Government Code of 1991. Anyway, thank you very much, Attorney, for joining us. Again, uh, Katribo, it's a pri- always a privilege and an honor to be with Attorney Alfred Campanyan. Good afternoon. <laughs> thank you, mga Katribo, for joining yet another informative episode of Kalingan Katribo Legal Diaries. You can watch us live on Daily Tribune's official Facebook page every Friday at 3.30 p.m., and on Tribune Now on YouTube. Again, this is Roy Pelovelio. Good afternoon.